Climate change is currently intruding upon us, quick and deadly like a ticking time bomb, ready to explode. Quick in relation to the 4.54 billion years Earth has been here, and deadly enough to wipe out all human life within decades. Truth is, we really don't know how much more time we have left. For climate change becomes irreversible, for those poor polar bears drown in the melting sea of ice caps that our Arctic Ocean has come to. This constant increase in temperature on Earth is very alarming, at about one-third of a degree per decade since 1981. 2020 was Earth's second hottest year on record, at 1.76 degrees above normal. Between 2030 and 2050, climate change is expected to cause an additional 250,000 deaths. That is the equivalent of 83 9-11s. So, whose fault is this? A study published by IOP Science found that 99.9% .9 of all peer-reviewed scientists agree that we are. We are killing our world and each other. I may as well begin with introducing this term, vector. Oops, not that vector. <laughs> if you aren't already familiar with the word, a vector is an organism that transmits a disease, parasite, or genetic information from one species to another. In most circumstances, vectors are very harmful. The most common vectors spoken about today are mosquitoes. These incessant beasts transmit an abundance of diseases, including malaria, yellow fever, and perhaps the most deadly of all, Ebola. These vector-borne illnesses have spread more rapidly now that the average temperature has increased. Take ticks, for example. Ticks prefer habitats with humidity and regions above 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Since the early 2000s, Lyme disease rates in the continental U.S. have risen by more than 20%, according to Bay Area Lyme Disease Foundation. Because of this, ticks, because of the increase in temperature, ticks are able to find more inhabitable regions. Rather than spring weather beginning in mid to late April, ticks are finding optimal temperatures in March, resulting in increased exposure opportunities for us. If th there is nothing done to solve this problem, it will only get worse. Here's some more bad news. Vectors aren't necessarily just bugs. Even larger animals can be carriers of infectious diseases. These diseases are known as zoonotic diseases. So, why is zoonotic disease more prevalent now as opposed to years ago? Well, there's a direct correlation between these diseases and deforestation. Deforestation is defined as the purposeful clearing of forested land. Since the Industrial Revolution, trees have begun disappearing from their natural habitat as a result of deforestation. This loss of habitats for many species has become increasingly problematic. Take the Amazon rainforest, for example. The Amazon rainforest is known for its calamitous wildfires that basically destroy it. In fact, 17% of the Amazon is already gone, and alarming 18 million acres of forest are lost each year. This is not only caused by the devastating deforestation caused by um, the wildfires, but also industrial agriculture. Cattle ranching, more specifically. When people need to make room for big industrial farms, it's usually at the expense of our world's most wonderful forest, home to trees and other wildlife. So what do these animals end up doing once their habitats are destroyed? Well. Some end up dying as these forest animals need certain temperatures to maintain their homeostasis and overall well-being. Those that are left end up intruding onto our homes and into our neighborhoods. Let's say a bear, for example, was in the woods, its natural habitat, and was bitten by a rabid raccoon. Now, that bear has rabies. Over the course of the year, it is pushed out of its habitat onto our backyards and parks. This bear may bite people, that it is exposed to and give them rabies. Despite that being a totally hypothetical scenario, it happens very often. In fact, three out of every four new infectious diseases caused by other animals. According to the CDC.gov, the most common diseases in the United States uh, include zoonotic influenza, rabies, and Lyme disease, which is also a vector-borne illness. If nothing is done to solve this issue, it will only get worse. So you're probably thinking, how did this pertain to the spread of infectious diseases today? And why should I be worried about it? Unfortunately, we now live in a world where the word disease is muttered by all almost every hour. 
This disease is the COVID-19 pandemic, which I'm sure we know all too well. The COVID-19 pandemic is like others previously discussed, an infectious disease. Though it may not have been directly caused by climate change, climate change has certainly made it a whole lot worse, especially for people living in, within impoverished areas. With all of these vector-borne illnesses in the world, the risk for another pandemic comes even higher. Although climate change won't pick who it affects, it affects people in different ways. Most of the people sitting in this room today probably don't realize how much climate change has already impacted our world because we are immune to it, in a sense. Climate change has a greater impact on the less affluent countries and communities within them, just as things were in 12th century Europe during the bubonic plague. The bubonic plague wiped out a third of Europe, which was most people at the time, and not the wealthy or the royalty. Just as things were back then, money gives you more power and opportunities, but also some immunity to the less favorable aspects of our world. So what can we do about it? Some things that you, as an individual, can do to make climate change in your community are lowering your carbon footprint. Easier said than done, I'll admit. Most people talk about changes to make when lowering their carbon footprint, such as eating more plant-based food, driving an electric car rather than one powered by gas, and composting more. We can always strive to become better as individuals, but influencing our entire community is integral to not only change our habits, but our mindsets, to change the way we view the world. The longer we stand with this incurable mindset of climate change, the closer destruction approaches us. We must take a stand and act upon this issue now. Not tomorrow, not next year, not in 2050 when it's already too late. Now.